Hey there, Dave Keller here with Market Misbehavior. As we're recording this uh, just today on, uh, on a Thursday afternoon, uh, the S&P 500 rallied very, very nicely. And this is after the last couple of days, which have been very distributive. So you had a couple of down days and, and Tuesday and Wednesday, certainly uh, feeling like an acceleration to the downside. And after a big down day on a Wednesday where everything was moving lower, Thursday, you have a huge update, the S&P up a, a couple percent and a lot of stocks bouncing very nicely out of those lows. This is a pattern um, usually referred to as a dead cat bounce, and it sounds kind of graphic. What I'll do for you today is explain to you what that is, why traders call it a dead cat bounce. We'll look at an example and, uh, and then apply it to the current S&P 500. So today's question is, what is a dead cat bounce? So traders and investors over the years have built up all sorts of sayings to describe different market activity. A lot of that uh, is, is a way to illustrate the markets. We talk about something taking off and stalling, a lot of aviation terms, to be honest with you, because the path of a stock price often uh, matches or mimics the path of a flight uh, as you're uh, tracking its performance over time. But one particular situation is when you have a big distribution, you have a big sell-off of a, of, a, of a couple days, and then you have a nice bounce higher. And a lot of times it sucks a lot of people in, uh, but in the end, it usually re resolves to the downside. It's called a dead cat bounce. Before we get to that, looking at some examples, I just want to remind you, if you're interested in this sort of analysis, looking at charts, thinking about investor decision-making, behavior, and routines, I'd love for you to subscribe to the channel. It'd be great to have you along this journey with us. Also, give the video a like if you could. We would very, very much appreciate it. Finally, put a comment below the video. Do you see this current move in the S&P 500 as a dead cat bounce, and why or why not? Let's get to the chart. All right, so first we're gonna start with a chart of Royal Caribbean, ticker RCL, and we're gonna look back a little ways. This is sort of mid-2020. Uh, so this is after the March 2020 low off the left side of the page. We then rally and have this nice uptrend of higher highs and higher lows. And I want you to focus here sort of a third of the way through when we get to the beginning of June of 2020. Now the stock gapped higher, which we actually usually call an exhaustion gap. This is after the stocks had a pretty good run and then has one big gap higher. Usually that's it's called an exhaustion gap because it's usually right at the end of the move. It's sort of the last gasp higher, one final big push before things exhaust. At the very top, by the way, we see where the open and close are right at the same uh, level. And then the uh, price goes down from here. So you can call that actually a couple different things, but two ways you might refer to that if you use candlestick analysis. One would be a doji candle. Uh, and in particular, you actually call that a um, dragonfly doji, which is when the open and close are about at the same level and you have a long lower shadow below that. You also might call that a, what's called a hanging man candle, which is when the open and close are near each other at the top and it's after a big run. And usually it means a short-term distribution. So after the gap higher, this doji or this candle of indecision usually suggests a bit of a down move. The next couple of days, you can see very distributive. Every day we close down from the previous day. Every day we close below each day's open. So at this point, Royal Caribbean started to go from looking pretty solid. And then this is in early June when the whole entire S&P 500 started to exhaust and, and come down a bit. Uh, you can see Royal Caribbean was coming down very quickly. So on day three after the top, certainly felt like things were going to go down forever, right? And there's a thing called a recency bias, a recency effect where you assume whatever just recently happened is most likely going to continue. That's what would, uh, would, would certainly be a top of mind for me. But look at what happened for a couple of days after that far. You had a bounce higher. You had actually a couple of days uh, higher. And, and especially at that open, you'd actually gapped uh, higher and actually made it almost to the range of that high day again. What we often refer to that move is, is a dead cat bounce. And what that means is the main direction is down after an initial down thrust where there's a huge movement, right? There's a lot of profit taking, a lot of selling, all of a sudden, enough people start to see this as maybe an opportunity, maybe an opportunity to buy on the dips, and they nibble a little bit. That jacks the price up very quickly uh, you know, for a very, very short-term gain, but usually spikes to the upside, big up day or two. What happens if this is indeed a downtrend is the downtrend soon takes over, and you probably had a warning signal here when instead of being a big up close, you gapped up, but you closed back toward the lows of the day. So it showed during the day there was actually distribution. And then you can see we continued lower. The real tell is when we break below the low, uh, which began that uh, dead cat bounce pattern. It sort of confirms the fact that the path of least resistance is down. 
So how can you tell a dead, dead cap pounce? We've had a big, uh, number one, a big rally to the upside, a big extended move. Step two, you have a big down thrust out of the high. Step three, a nice bounce called the dead cap bounce, which is actually bouncing up from that initial down thrust. And then the final confirmation is you uh, eclipse those lows and you go down again. So by the way, what told you that Royal Caribbean wasn't going to go to zero? The key is in that trend, what happens when, the, when, when you break that pattern, you have the dead cap bounce and then continue lower. For me, it's all about where we're at relative to key levels. In particular, do we keep making lower lows? As long as we keep making lower lows, the trend is down. I'm starting to look for a higher low. And if you look not long after you get a higher low there in uh, the first week in July. So you made, made another big leg down there going into the end of June, you then made a higher low, which suggested that the downtrend was, was potentially no longer in place. You then start to see a higher low, a higher high, and all of a sudden it's indicating more accumulation. Then you can see we don't make lower uh, lows. We don't make lower highs. We actually make the opposite. It tells you then the path of least resistance is higher. So by tracking the highs and lows, really the swings, you can get the overall direction. But a dead cap bounce is that sort of pattern. And it's usually something you want to stay away from if you see it materialize, materializing. The reason why we use that as an example is because look at the current price of the S&P 500. Now, I can't guarantee this is a dead cap bounce. I will tell you, we have had all the signs uh, that this is the beginning of something uh, something potentially more. What has happened so far, and I had a, a video I recorded not too long ago uh, talking about uh, a chart to follow from market tops a couple of weeks ago. And what we basically looked at was this bearish divergence in the S&P 500, higher highs in price, lower peaks in RSI. So it's called a bearish momentum divergence, usually indicates that an uptrend is exhausted. You actually had a very similar pattern back here in January of 2021. That resulted in a pullback of about 4.7, 4.8% from the peak of that move to the pullback right to the 50-day moving average. If you look at what happened just now, this week, we have done almost an identical thing. We pull back about four and a half to 5% right to the 50-day moving average. Today was where we bounced off of those lows. Here's the, here's the challenge. Could this be a dead cat bounce, which is a big up move after a big thrust down? I think there's no denying that this is a big sell off. It's actually the worst move that we've had in uh, in months on the S&P 500 in terms of a uh, you know one week change. Uh, you then have a quick bounce off of an established support level, the 50 day moving average, also the trend line using the October lows and the March lows. What confirms this is a dead cat bounce? Easy. We break the low. We break the low from a Wednesday's bar, which is around 40, 50 or so. Uh, just below, uh, just uh, above that. So if we would close below 4050, that would take it below the uh, beginning of that dead cap bounce maneuver. It would also take us below the 50 day moving average. It would also break the trend line, taking the October low and the March low and extending it to where we're at, lining up very well with the low earlier this week. I think that would confirm a much higher likelihood of further downside. You can see on the shaded areas here, some of the levels where I think we would expect support, uh, given, uh, you know, again, making assumptions about how long we would go down. But I think if we do break that level, the very, very least you expect another 5% move lower, that would take it down to the 3850, 3900 range, sort of the purple shaded area, which would also line up coincidentally with the low from the end of March before that next, that last big uh, push higher into, uh, into the high into April and May. So overall, the dead cap bounces after an extended up move. We've had that. You have the initial thrust lower, which we have had. You then have a bounce higher. And today, if you just look at today's trading, you can see lots of green. You can see lots of uh, things here. If I look at today's returns, um, you can see a lot of things. Uh, where are we? Here we go. Your dashboard. You can see a lot of uh, positive signals, right? You can see most sectors were up. You can see a lot of sectors were up uh, over 1%. You can see the chart of the Dow is actually nice. So big distribution day, big accumulation day. It checks all the boxes there for a dead cap ounce to confirm it and confirm that the path of least resistance is lower. We now need to break support. I think breaking 4120 was a significant initial signal from me. I'm, I'm certainly thinking more cautious than anything, but a break below 4050 would certainly confirm that we've seen a dead cap ounce this week that usually suggests uh, further downside and, uh, and think about raising cash, managing risk, and drawing lines in the sand on all of your charts, just like we're doing with the S&P 500. What would you need to see to suggest a rotation from bullish phase to bearish phase? I would be doing that with any positions in your portfolio and make sure you have an exit strategy now or still not too far from all-time highs.
So that, my friends, is what is a dead cat bounce. It's, a again, a term traders have thrown around for years as a way to describe a big move off of a, of a long-term high and then a quick bounce uh, reverting back to the, uh, to the upside. More often than not, just as the name describes, it's sort of a negative connotation, and that's for good reason. It usually is the initial bounce higher before another move lower. And if you think about it, a lot of disciplines like Dow Theory, like Elliott Wave, have that sort of wave structure, a big wave one, a wave two that kind of comes back, and that's sort of that dead cap bounce before the big wave three, which is the move lower. By undercutting the low of the beginning of that down thrust, that's what confirms that we have a much higher likelihood of much lower prices. From everyone here at Market Misbehavior, I'm Dave Keller. If you enjoyed this discussion about dead cap bounces and chart patterns, if you enjoy thinking about investor behavior and sentiment and breadth and decision making and routines, please subscribe to my channel. We'd love to have you along the journey with us. Also, give the video a like. We would very, very much appreciate it. Finally, below the video, put a comment in there. What do you think? Do you think this recent move on the last week in the S&P 500 is indeed a dead cap bounce pattern? If so, why? If not, why not? For everyone at Market Misbehavior, I'm Dave Keller. Be well, stay safe. We'll talk to you again soon. Thank you.